Okay. We are presently in the period of Sefirat Omer, and there are many minhagim of azelut, of mourning, during this period of Sefirat Omer, which is... Um, which is really quite an interesting topic on its own. I spoke about it today, how come we mourn the students of Rabbi Akiva. So today, when mourning is really only a 12-month period for the most stringent, this is by the parents, 12 months, and here we are many, many years later, mourning Talmud Rabbi Akiva. In truth, uh, the uh, Mifarshim explained that we are not really mourning the death of the students of Rabbi Akiva, because that really doesn't go more than 12 months. Furthermore, they died between, as the Gemara says, between uh, Pesach and Shavuot, and we only mourn until Lagma Omer. So Rabbi Hezkel Abramski, Zichameli Bracha, once mentioned, that we are mourning the Torah of these 24,000 Talmudim. Because as it is written that Rabbi Akiva used to be Doresh Tili Tili Shel Halachot. And Rabbi Akiva knew the secret of all the Tagim, of all of the different crowns on the letters. He knew the secret of each Tag, of each crown. Of the of the of of the of the of the Othios. where does those secrets go? The answer is those secrets went with the students of the of Rabbi Akiva, and we don't have them. That's what we're mourning for for their chokma. Why don't we have that wisdom? That you have to listen to my shiur that I uh, that I gave today. What that 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 whole wisdom? Uh, uh, why it got lost and why it had to get lost during the time of Shikira. So this is what we mourn. Now, it's not a regular mourning per- period of all the Dine Atelut. The Shulchan Aruch in Siman Tavsa Digimo says like this, No hagim shelo lisa isha ben Pesach le'atzeret ad lagba omer. The minhag is not to marry a lady between Pesach to until lagba omer, because during that time, metu talmidi rabbi akiva. Aval le'ares, ve'le kadesh, but if you want to uh, 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 get engaged, shapir dami... And also for marriage, somebody we don't we don't punish him. So that is what we find regarding Sefirata Omer. And what about cutting hair? No hagim The minhag is not to is not to shave during Sefirata Omer. That's all it says. Until Lagba Omer, I'm sorry. Because then they stop. So we, we discussed that it's not so simple. And the Gemara says the, until until uh, until they had said it. I'm not going to get into that now. We see that one is not allowed to take a haircut during this uh, period of Sfirata Omer. I think last year we gave a whole shiur that there was two minagim in Morocco. Some held, or many in Fez and, and many other cities, held until Lagba Omer. Not from Lad. Shulchan Aruch is Lad, Lamed In many cities in Morocco, they held Lagba Omer. And it seems to be in Tangier. In Meknes, they held Lamed Dalit. Lad Ba Omer, like the, like the Shulchan Aruch. But, but that, that's, another, that's another discussion. What happens if somebody has to shave because of uh, business reasons or because of reasons that, uh, that, that's important uh, that he has some reason because of his job or because he thinks he's going to lose a certain business deal. It's very interesting. There is a Seshuva brought down in the Sefer, Nitive Am. Nitive Am was a great Moroccan Hakam, Rabbi Amram, um, uh, uh, Rabbi Amram Amrovai, uh, and he actually discusses the, uh, the, the this topic and he brings the Teshuva, but he doesn't say what the background of the teshuva was. I heard from uh, from Rav Shlomo Dayan Shlita, a very big Shalim Chacham in Yerushalayim, Mechaber Sefer Atelet Shlomo, and he gives us a little, he gave me the background, what went on. It was a story that happened in the city of Tangiers that there was Rav Yitzchak Kalfon basically um, um, removed Rav Garzon, somebody called Rav Garzon, from his 
from his post because he shaved during the Omer. Why did he shave during the Omer? Because uh, he he dealt with goyim and he, he had he had to uh, he had to shave. So the chevrat haruchsim, he was part of those who did a rechitza, were very upset. So uh, uh, one of the great uh, geonim then, his name is of Yuda Bikati. He wrote a uh, he wrote a, a long teshuva, and this is what the teshuva. This is the teshuva that's brought down in the Tivea. He writes that most people do not do not uh, uh, obviously do not shave, but it's a minhag. And says says Rabbi Yehuda Bikasit, uh, uh, based on the Sefer Achida Chaim Sha'al, that it's a minhag that doesn't have a yesod. It's a very it's a light minhag we'll call it. And he saw a lot of kehilot that are lenient on this. So therefore, since we see that nowadays he said we see Talmud Hachamim Olam Yeshivot are more machmir, but many people are lenient because it's not it doesn't have the strength. Of a of a, uh, of, of a of a of a of a of a solid din minhag we'll call it that it's categorically forbidden. The minhag yoter kal is remembering, and those therefore, for if you have a, a, enough of a tzorich, enough of a, enough of a reason, you could you you you'd be allowed to shave. Also, Rav Moshe Feinstein in Helik Dalit Siman Kuf Gimel also permitted in case of great need to shave even during Ben Amitzarim. All the more so during the Omer, which is more lenient than Ben Amitzarim, for sure he's going to allow it. Now, this is besides the fact that the Bet Ovet does bring a minhag that certain would shave. There are certain people where this is with the minhag of Pemanim from Erev Shabbat to Erev Shabbat. Because Erev Shabbat is Doche the minhag. al Kolpanim, we're not knowing that way. We do not shave the whole uh, Lagba Omer. However, when there is a Tzorech, we see that there was certain Chachamim that felt that it was a little bit of a lighter minhag. They would, they would, uh, uh, they would shave. Okay, that's one point. Second point is... Um, is buying different kelim and different items and going into a new house during uh, during 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 the, uh, the the period of of Spirata Omer. I remember in one community I was in about Hilul Shabbat they would not ask me about driving on Shabbat to their family they would not ask me about uh, about uh, uh, um, blatantly violating the laws of Tzniyut, they wouldn't ask me. What would they ask? Are you allowed to buy this radio and this uh, this thing during Sfirat Omer? Are you allowed to buy this piece of clothing, this shoe? That's what they would have to be so careful. The truth is, there are people who are machmir. Nevertheless, we, we do not have a minhag to keep away from buying new things during the period of Sfirat Omer. During the time of, of, of Ben Amitzarim, the three weeks, it's written in the poskim that you do not buy new things during the three weeks because you don't want to say Shehayano Vikim and Vikim and Vizman because it really isn't Zazman Azeh. It's not really a good time. But during the time of Sirat Omer, there isn't anything brought down. There's a Sefer, Shelotu Chuvot Vayomer Meir, written by Rabbi Meir of Akdin. He was actually a, a, a Rav in Severia, in the city of Severia. And he says, in the city of Severia, he never heard of such a khumrah uh, um, not to make a shehiyanu during the time of Spirat Omer, and for sure they're not to buy clothes, uh, buying clothes, everything was totally allowed. And the the poskim also bring this down. The Mishnabura and Sifkat and Bed brings from the Ma'amar Mordechi, and also the Or Litzion and Ribin Tzion Bashol also say there's no need to be machmir in this regard. After I I looked into the subject. A new sefer came out. This sefer was the Bizot Le Yehuda, written by Rabbi Yehuda Toledano, who lived at least 150 years ago. And he wrote a sefer in Orachayim, and he writes the following: Uma sheomrim ba'olam she'en la'asod begadim hadashim ben pesach le'atzeret. That the people say that you shouldn't have wear new clothing during Pesach to Shavuot kusihat nashim. That is just women. Jabbering. We haven't found found this khumra in any book. And if it's going to be because well you have extra joy and you're not supposed to be joyous. They only say that you shouldn't do extra simha. And that's why we don't listen to music and, and making extra 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 simha and weddings, etc. But don't don't add on extra khumras of your own. So 
buying new things and new furniture, new new clothing, all of this, and even saying Shekhyanu during the time of Sipirat Omer, so, uh, during, so, is totally permitted. That was, we never heard our Minhag being, I spoke to a lot of Dayanim about this as well, we never heard those who are Mahmir in this regard. Okay. Number, I, number um, uh, another point that I wanted to bring up is that the Ramah brings in Seif Dalet, Nahagu Hanashim Shelo Laasot Melacha Mi Pesach Ve'ad Atzeret Mishkiyat Ahama Ve'elach. Women would be machmir not to do melacha from Pesach to Shavuot, from night fallen on. The, the tour discusses the reason. Nevertheless, um, even though there were ladies who were machmir, but we never saw men being machmir. Some say that it's women, but it didn't really mean women, also men. But we never saw, we never saw that, that, that men are machmir on this. And in Shelotu Tshuvot Emek Yoshua, Rabbi Yeshua Maman Shlita, Hashem should give him a long life. In Chayrik Zayn Siman Hayat, he says, Gam anachnu bimaroko lo shamanu meolam shayu anashim nizanim bazeh. We haven't heard people being machmir on this. Ela kola amba yusim melachem kelagi. Everyone, they would do their melacha as regular. Just he saw personally in his house that women would be careful not to do melacha during that, that period. But that's just a private minag, that's not a general minag, and, uh, and definitely most people were, uh, were, were, were not machmir on such a subject. Okay, so those are certain halachot that are noheg in regards to uh, in regards to spirata, uh, spirata omer, what to keep away from. I want to mention one chidush in honor of the new sefer of the Ben Yishai that came out, Mikab Siel. Baruch Hashem recently was, was printed a sefer that the Ben Yishai, in his sefer, Ben Yishai often quotes, called the Mikab Siel. And they found certain parts of it and they ransomed it for a lot of money and they were able to print it. And he has one haidush on something that I always struggled with, which is when if people pray early on uh, Lel Shabbat and they get home right by the time of Shkiyata Hama and they haven't counted Shkiyata Omer yet, what do they do? It's already time to count Shkiyata Omer. Do you have to wait till nightfall? Which would mean sometimes that over here in Canada would be an extra 50 minutes in order to do Shkiyata Omer. So some people they'll wait and they'll wait until until they can't start a meal. So one would think, no problem. Appoint a shomer, appoint a a guardian on you. You can't use your alarm clock because we don't use alarms on Shabbat, right? But appoint a guardian. Appoint a guardian. So the Benish Chai says, no, a guardian is not a good idea. In the he says it's parashat sab. A guardian is not a good idea because they're also eating the meal with you. What does it help? So if you have a guardian who is not eating the meal with you, so try to find that, good luck, that'll be okay. But that doesn't happen so often. So the Benishai says, I have another idea. So it's like this. What are you not allowed to do before Sirat Omer? You're not allowed to have a set meal. Before Sirat Omer, and Kirat Shema. You're not allowed to have a set meal. A set meal. What's a set meal? A kabita of bread. Not a lot. So certain shiurim will hold uh, a slice, a slice and a half is already a kabitza. Although commonly people say a slice is only a kazai, but you're getting into dangerous territory. So the Ben Yishai says like this. Don't eat a kabitza of bread at the beginning of the meal. Eat a little bit of bread, maybe a kazai, and then eat the rest of your meal. And then when the time comes, seta kuchavim, do sefirata omer, in the middle of your meal, do kriyat shema, simirat haomer, and then eat the other kazait of bread. That's what he writes in Sefer Mikab Siel. An amazing haidush that he writes, and that way he says that you could, uh, you could, uh, you could eat your meal. I don't think he writes this in the Sefer Ben Ishai. This is a new edition written in the Mikab Siel. Another unbelievable he thinks in the Sefer Mikab Siel, and this I'm going to end, is regarding Hadzakat Ner Shabbat. We've spoken about this at length in this theory, that uh, the Minhag of the Sfaradim is to light and then make a Beracha. Rav Yosef, Zechem Sadiq Kadosh Libracha, was very adamant that the Sfaradim should make a Beracha before and then light. He wanted to change the Minhag that they, that they make the Beracha and then light. The Ben Ishchai, in this Mikab Siel, says, the minhag is the light and then make a bracha. And he says, but that we know, he always would have said that, but he writes, and I have, a, I have an answer to the question that they all ask, what with over la siyatan? Usually you make al brachat beforehand, and over here make the bracha afterwards. So number one, he answers something that we wrote in our sefer, that 
there's a hashash bracha levatana. There's a hashash of a of a, of, a, of a, it, 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 you shouldn't do it. He doesn't say the words bracha levatana that the aruch hashulchan does, but he says that it's not good because if you're making a bracha, how could you have the words light? It's a problem. But he says on top of that, that's that the ladies just uh, 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 cover their eyes. That's not good because the light penetrates. So that's not called over la siyatan either because what they would cover their eyes, not see the light. And make the bracha, and then they would see the light. So be over that He says no, that's not so good. So they really should just close their eyes. Why do they close their eyes? That way, no light penetrates whatsoever. He said, still, I'm not so happy with that. So he says, I have another answer. Why it's called over that And listen to this hidush. He says, really think about it. When a lady lights at the katner shabbat, it's still light outside. So where is she benefiting from the light now? As they say in the Gemara, shraga betiara mayani. What does the light in the daytime help? So you have to say that the main bracha is for the darkness that's going to come later on. So there you have over that yet, and she brings a bracha for the darkness that's going to come later on. That's what he says in the Sefer Mikabsiel. And therefore he says the minhag is the, is the proper minhag, the light, and then to make the bracha. Ah, you're going to ask over that yet, No problem. You have the nighttime, the, the darkness coming. All right. Hazeku Baruch.